Awesome. Uh, well, yeah, as, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, I originally had uh, 30 minutes, but uh, you know what? We're going to do this in 20 minutes, and that's the joy of being able to edit your slides a few seconds before you come onto stage. So um, again, thank you everyone for coming. Um, really glad to have you here. And as you guys heard Evan and uh, Paul talk about uh, composable solutions and being able to build on top of the platform, um, I get the glorious job of actually uh, walking through and demoing all that awesome capability. So uh, don't just have to talk about it, have to show it, um, and it's going to be great. So how to build a monitoring application in 20 minutes. So you guys have all seen technical demos, um, and I've given a lot of technical demos. You guys have probably given a lot of technical, technical demos. Start thinking about kind of the structure of how, how, these demos, how these demos really go. And I'm a huge movie fan, right? So I love movies. I love watching movies. I used to love going out to watch movies, but recently I have a four-month-old, four and I don't get to go out to movies very often. But one of my favorite types of movies is the heist movie, right? So, you know, you think about Ocean's Eleven, you think about the Italian job, Inside Man. Um, heist movie, really, really awesome, really simple anatomy, right? You've got the plan, you've got the execution, you've got the big reveal at the end, right? Very satisfying, very awesome. This is a screenshot from the, uh, the Asphalt Jungle, um, one of the originals, uh, kind of kicked off the whole genre of the modern day heist movie. Um, and before you guys, you know, what the heck is this guy talking about? I thought we were going to get a demo of a monitoring application. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I also really love uh, really forced uh, analogies, so this is really going to be good for me. So, um, so yeah, so I'm going to walk you through this demo. I'm going to walk you through the plan of what we're going to build. I'm going to walk you through the execution of how we're going to build it. And hopefully, I'm going to do the big reveal where I jump into our Cloud2 instance and we look at data and, and build out this alerting system. So. Without further ado, the plan, right? Everyone's in a room. They're looking at schematics. This isn't necessarily a bank schematic, but we're going to build a website monitor with InfluxDB 2.0, right? The plan here is to use our free forever tier in Cloud2 and Telegraph to monitor our websites. So um, this is kind of a simple diagram. Again, not a bank schematic, but uh, you've got a bunch of websites. We've got Telegraph that's going to collect all that information, pump it into InfluxDB, and then we're going to use our UI to anal analyze that data and build out some monitoring and alerting, right? So very, very straightforward, very simple. Uh, hopefully we can do it in a few minutes. So let's go through the execution. How many of you guys are Telegraph users out there? Yes, Telegraph. Awesome project. Um, great engineers that work on it. Uh, it's the open source agent for collecting data, right? It's kind of, it's the toolbox, right? It's driven by the community. There's over 600 contributors to the project. Really great, uh, dedicated uh, group of individuals that, that, that build this. And the awesome thing about Telegraph is it's simple to configure with a text file, and it's extremely flexible. I'm going to jump into all the details of Telegraph. You guys are probably Telegraph experts. We also have a talk later today from David Mackay, who's going to talk a little bit more about how flexible Telegraph can be. But Telegraph is going to be how we actually go out and we pull the information and monitor the data from our website and pump it into cloud, right? So the first part of this, uh, this demo, right, is data is being collected by Telegraph. We actually only need to use two plugins, right? We need a plugin for pulling data in. In this case, I'm going to use the HTTP response plugin. Now, there's over 200 plugins, as Evan mentioned, in Telegraph. Uh, there's a ton of different ways that you can monitor all types of servers or websites or anything you really need to. Um, this is the HTTP response plugin, but it also has um, just a regular HTTP plugin that will go out and fetch data from websites. It's got, um, uh, it's got a ping plugin that can go out and ping thousands of servers and bring that data in as well. Uh, but we're going to use the HTTP response. And again, setting up and configuring Telegraph, really easy. Um, if you look here, this is the extent of my Telegraph configuration. I have a list of URLs. I've got, obviously, influx data, influx days, a couple of our other internal URLs. I'm writing it into a, a measurement called website check, and I'm using the head method, right? So I don't really care about the response. I just want to make sure that the site is up. So again, 
what, that's 12 lines and half of that is actually the URLs that I'm gonna monitor. Very simple configuration. Um, throw that into Telegraph to grab data coming in. So data is getting pulled from the various websites. Now what do I wanna do? I wanna actually send it into cloud, right? And it's kinda, you know, how do I actually do that? Well, the awesome thing about 2.0 cloud is we actually include a Telegraph builder directly in the user interface, right? And so you can go into our UI, and I'll, I'll walk you guys through this in a minute, uh, but you can go in and you can build your own Telegraph configuration to quickly collect data from a handful of systems. Um, we don't have support for all 200 in the UI, but the awesome thing is you see at the very bottom of that screen there, there's a download config button you can download that configuration, completely customize it with any of the 200 plugins that you want, and load that data into InfluxDB. The other thing that I think um, Tim is gonna touch on is writing to 1.x and 2.x at the same time, which you can do that in, in, in Telegraph. So again, um, you, can, you can build out the Telegraph configuration in the UI. You can see this is, this is a direct screenshot from the UI, it shows me my output configuration gives me the URL, gives me the token, which is how you communicate with Influx Cloud securely. You write it to the organization and I'm writing it to the bucket telegraph. So, I've got the HTTP response plugin, which is going out to all my websites and grabbing information. I've got the output plugin that's now writing the data into InfluxDB 2.0. And I should be good to go. So, enough talk, enough slides. We're gonna jump into the actual product and, and see this in action. So, assuming my browser is all set up correctly. Um, so this is what you guys are gonna see when you sign up for your free cloud account if you haven't already. Um, this is the home page. Uh, gives you kind of at the top a little introduction. Gives you your, your, uh, your, your, your welcome in a different language, um, and then gives you a couple different options, right? So we talked, we talked a lot about Telegraph and a lot about getting your data in, so obviously the first place that I'm gonna go is loading my data into the system. So I click here and I actually get brought to the Telegraph configuration option, right? Now, I've already gone through and because you don't wanna watch me sit up, you don't wanna sit up here and watch me type, um, I've built my system plugin uh, already, so this is the exact screenshot that I pulled few minutes ago into my presentation, right, the InfluxDB 2.0. A little tough to see, but that's why we have PowerPoint. Um, and I can download that configuration directly to my machine and customize it if I want. Again, you can create your, tele, your, your configuration here. We've got a few uh, baked in configuration options. Um, we're gonna be adding more in the future, um, but you can see how quickly you can get started with, with Telegraph. Now, like any good demo or cooking show, um, I've already got data flowing into this system. Uh, I've set this up uh, a few days ago. Um, and so let's take a look at the data that's coming in from the HTTP input plugin. So Paul talked a little bit about Data Explorer and the ability to explore your data in the system. Uh, it's really easy to get started and start see, and, and see graphs, right? So if I look along the bottom, I've got my telegraph bucket, which is where we storing, we're storing data. We saw in the configuration that I'm doing a website check as the, as the measurement, and I'm gonna look at the response times for these websites. So with those three clicks, I actually can submit and get live data coming in. And thankfully, the website, or the, the, uh, the wireless is working in this conference room, which is awesome. Um, but you can see right away, this is the response times from all the websites that I was monitoring in my configuration, and I can hover over and see the actual information. Right, and right away you start seeing trends in your data, right? It was a couple, couple of clicks, but I can see right away, and anybody who's close to the screen can see right away, huh, what is this website that's taking so long to respond? Uh-oh, it looks like the influxdata.com website. We better talk to marketing about that a little bit. Um, so right away you can start getting insights from the data that's flowing into the system, and that's, that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about time to awesome, is how do I get at my data really quickly? Um, and how do I see that, see that information? So the, um, the Data Explorer, really valuable for, for taking a look at that information. Um, as Paul mentioned before, you know, I don't wanna have to write a bunch of custom Flux scripts in order to get access to my data, but I probably wanna take that and 
then build more advanced analysis on top of it. And so directly in the UI, once I've got my baseline filtering completed, I can jump into the script editor and start writing my flux right there, right? Um, and so this has access to all the hundreds of flux functions that are available. And if you need a little bit of guidance on what to do, um, we have help built right into the app so you can see and add different flux components into, the, into the, your script, right? This is in, co in uh, combination with our awesome docs team. So all of these are documented and you can always find more information as to the, the functions that you want to use. So again, really want to provide an easy way for you to get started and visualize your data without having to learn a brand new language, but then give those power users the capability to jump in and do really detailed analysis of your information. So the other thing I want to touch on is the idea of this, uh, when you're exploring your data and you've got some information that you really like, you can then come up here and save that information to use later. So you can, you can build out and build your analysis, uh, understand what your data is looking like, and then send that directly to a dashboard uh, so that you can save it for, for later. So uh, aside from exploring your data, we have a full set of dashboarding capabilities built right into the platform. You'll see this is the, this is the data that we just looked at. Um, I actually built a dashboard that shows me some information about the websites that I'm monitoring on a regular basis. Um, we've got a full dashboarding capability built right into the UI. Again, you don't have to, you don't have to, um, you don't have to start from scratch. So one of the awesome things about 2.0 is this notion of a website template or a, a dashboard template. So you can come up and import from a template. And we've got a whole set of, of dashboard templates um, that you can choose from that are built in, but you can also build your own templates, right? So if you've got a baseline dashboard that you want people to start from, you can actually build that directly into the application and uh, give that, use that as a starting point for then further customize the, the dashboard. So again, once you do something in Influx, we don't want you to have to rebuild it again and again. It's really frustrating. Awesome, so we've got, um, we've got a full capability of dashboarding, we've got data coming in, we're able to explore it, but you know, I don't wanna sit and watch a, watch a dashboard 24 hours a day to know if my, uh, if my website is actually responding. So let's build some monitoring and alerting. So over here on the left side, let's jump into the monitoring and alerting section. Now I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail here on monitoring and alerting. We have a talk later today uh, with um, with Nate and Denise that's gonna deep dive into this capability. But at a high level, you set up checks that go in and check your data at a regular interval to look for anomalies, and you build out a notification rule to then monitor those checks and send information to you, right? And so in the cloud free tier, I've got that set up to send to Slack, uh, which I have access to. But if you jump into actually looking at what a check looks like, it should be very familiar, right? So this is the same interface that we saw with the Data Explorer. We really, we, we've, we've talked to users that really like the simplicity of, of clicking around. Um, so we leverage that same, those same components to build out and build a check through the UI. And then you can actually configure it to um, in the same screen, right? And so uh, one of the awesome things that Paul mentioned was string interpolation in Flux, right? And here you can see an example of how that's used in an actual use case, right? So this status message is what's actually um, reported and recorded in my, in my statuses for whenever my check is run. And so you've got uh, the ability to customize and use the tags from the information directly in the message so you can build something that's compelling and interesting to you, right? In this UI, you can also set different thresholds. You see that I've got um, a threshold for crit, which is one second, and I've got a threshold for warn that's 0.5. You know, those are just kind of examples. Probably want uh, a little tighter, tighter on those configurations. So I can jump in and actually see what it's doing, right? So this check is running, and it's been running all morning, um, and it's giving me information about my system in, in real time, right? And so I look at and I can see um, the check that's run and whenever it reports websites are okay or you can see a couple of warns that are showing up in my, in my list here. Maybe you can see, let's see here. 
Now you can see. Cool. Um, so we can get a detailed information of the statuses that show up in, 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 your, in your checks. But checking doesn't really do anything. It keeps the information, um, information in the system. So in order to actually send that information to Slack, we need to build out some notification rules. And a notification rule, it just says, check and find when a check has a status of a certain threshold and then send that information to a third party, right? So it's basically just connecting the check to the, to the, to the actual um, Slack endpoint. In this case, you can customize the message. I'm just gonna use the message that I customized earlier, but again, using string interpolation in Flux, you can, you can really build out some detailed information so that when you get paged in the middle of the night or you get notified in Slack, um, you actually know where to go and what to do. So, if I jump over to my actual Slack messages, you'll see this happening in real time, right? So, I've got these, these notification rules and alerts running, and as my checks and as the responses come in, it's actually posting to my, uh, my personal uh, Savage Automation uh, Slack, Slack channel, um, giving me information about what's going on. Awesome. So what did we just do, right? We kind, of, we kind of dove into some of the details there. But again, we really wanted to set up some simple monitoring with InfluxDB2, right? So Telegraph plus InfluxDB Cloud, it's a powerful monitoring combination, right? Um, just a recap of, of, you know, so you get the, the, the image back in your head. And really all of this comes down to this fastest time to awesome that, that Evan and Paul have talked about, right? We said, you know, building a monitoring application in 20 minutes, um, but the goal is really to get you up and running with your data as fast as possible, right? And Telegraph is a powerful open source collection agent to, to bring data into the platform. In 2.0, we've got a free forever account, um, which you can use to get started now. Um, you know, no credit card required. Um, Flux, uh, really powerful and really key to unlocking some of the advanced querying and analysis in the 2.0 platform, right? You don't need to know Flux to get started and get analysis out of your data, but you have access to the full power of the Flux functions directly in the UI, so you can do that, do that complex analysis if you'd like. We have full dashboarding capability with the ability to import and export and templatize dashboards. Again, build it once and then share it, move it around, bring it in. Uh, we don't want you to have to redo your work. It's really, really key there. And then finally, the last piece of the puzzle is the monitoring and alerting, right? You don't wanna have to look at a dashboard to know something is wrong. You set up alerts, you set up checks, and you set up alerts to get that information and bring it to where you are. And that's it. That's monitoring and alerting in uh, your website in 20 minutes or less. So thank you guys. He did, he beat what I am. I think I owe him like 20 bucks for that, getting back on time. But uh, any questions for him? Because uh, that was pretty quick. I assume you're all following along. You all got your own cloud accounts now. And uh, any questions for us? If not right now, I'll be around for the rest of the day. Um, and tomorrow, and you can come and find me. I'm happy to answer any questions about uh, the products and, uh, and actually gather your feedback. So just let me know. Thank you, Russ, and uh, wow. Um, so if we said you had to do that in three minutes, could you do it? <laughs> I'm ready. All right, so the, the important...